In part of Maths and Small Business we look at queuing and we look at multi-server queues and single server queues. Today we're just going to look at the single server queues and get that rolling before we get to the complex bit. The mathematics in this isn't too hard but there's quite a lot of logic attached to it and you've really got to work through systematically when you do these questions. Now queues are part of life so waiting up to be served for something it just happens all the time whether it's at an auto teller machine or whether it's lining up in a shop or lining up to buy movie tickets. The longer people wait, the less likely they, get, they are to come back to your shop, but this also depends on what they're buying. If they are lining up for, say, grand final tickets in a sport, they might be prepared to line up for a few hours, but you're not going to line up for a few hours for a packet of chips and a can of Coke. Okay, so there's different, different waiting times for different things. Businesses need to manage their queues so that uh, people aren't waiting so long and their servers the people serving their time is maximised and they're not standing around doing nothing waiting for someone else to turn up. Uh, the convention we're using is first in, first out. So what that means is that it's kind of like when you go to say Woolies and things now where you have um, all these people serving and all these people lining up and what happens is this person comes to here, as soon as they finish served they disappear off. It's really cool. Then the next person comes along, they're served and they disappear. It's not like in real life where you might kind of get here and then you shoot across to this other person being ser serving because it's quicker. No, no, you stay, you just follow straight through the line and you don't change. So if there was multiple servers, if there was multiple servers going on, what would happen is, um, this is probably like at, uh, oh, like at um, Target at Marion where you have all those servers and you line up in a big line and they just call the next person. If these are all the people lining up to go, and they've got no legs now, then this person would go there, and then that person would go there, then that person would go there. So it will just keep on going like that. It's called a non-deterministic queue. Oops, queue. So what this means is that you just go to the next person as soon as it's free. Okay? And then that makes our calculations a little bit, a little bit easier to follow through. So some of the assumptions that we have with queuing are as follows. The customer, as soon as the customer has been finished being served, the next customer is instantly ready to be served. Okay, so there's no lag time. Whereas in real life, as soon as one person leaves, you wait a couple of seconds for the next one to rock up. Okay, there are no breakdowns or price checks or FPOS things, so everything flows. So you're given times and that's what happens. Okay, which isn't also real life, but it, it kind of does okay for what we are doing. The person being served is not counted in the queue. When we're talking about how long the queue is, we don't count the person that is being served. So they're not included in the queue length at all. Okay, The person being served is not included. Now, we'll show you how this works in the next question, but um, it's really important that you remember those things. Sometimes the book counts the person being served, and other times it doesn't count the person being served. So we never do this, which means that some of the answers in the back of the book might be slightly different to what you calculate. Okay, single server queues are the ones we're starting at. With this, there's only one person serving, so it's like a small shop, and they keep working at a constant pace. As soon as one person's finished being served, the next person comes straight in. A couple of definitions for you. Arrival time is the time that people turn up to be served. Okay, service time is how long each customer is served for. Makes sense. Start finish service is the time they start being served and the time they finish being served. Customer waiting time is the start service time, take away the arrival time. So if you rock up at 9 and don't get served till 9.06, customer waiting time is 6 minutes. The server idle time is the time the server is not serving anyone. And this sometimes happens in multi-server uh, server queues and they're just standing around waiting for someone else to turn up. For a business, this isn't a good thing. Um, you want them to be busy all the time. Uh, queue length is the number of people waiting to be served at the start of a service period. At the start of a service period. So when we get around to doing this, we'll show you how it works and it'll, hopefully it will make sense. Now, with any of these things, the best thing to do is to look at an example. So let's have a look at this one here and look at the information that we're given. A shop has one server, okay, has one server who takes four minutes to serve every customer customers arrive every three minutes. Now automatically you should be saying okay if it takes four minutes to serve and three minutes people are rocking up you're going to end up in a pickle sooner or later you're going to have more people waiting around. Complete the table below and calculate the average waiting time 
per customer and the percentage idle time uh, for the server. So let's have a look at how it works. Now I've started filling the table out for you um, and now we'll just keep on going. The arrival time is the time that people are rocking up to be served. So the first person's at 9, then we go 903, 906, 909, 912, this will be 915 and then 918 is our last one. Okay. Our server, we've only got one server so you're writing server number one all the way through. Um, our start service I forgot to write up here that we're starting at 9 o'clock, but 9 a.m. is when we're going to start. Okay, our start service time, this person gets here at 9, and our service time is 4, so it goes through to 9.04. Then the next one starts at 9.04, 9.08, 9.08 9.12, 9.12 to 9.16, 9, 16, 9, 20, 20, 9, 24, and then the last one is 9, 24 to 9, 28. Okay, couple of things to look out for. Just check with your finished service time here that it is does not go past that one there because sometimes you can just keep on rolling down through here and you're filling in all these numbers and suddenly you look across here and the person might turn up at 918 and you're serving them at 910 now that doesn't work you can't do that in real life so I filled out this column I'm filling out all these columns as I go through and then I come to my customer waiting time this customer turns up at 9 and served at 9 so they wait for no time at all this one turns up at 903 and served at 904 so they wait one minute this person turns up at 9.06 and gets served at 9.08 so he has to wait or she has to wait 2 minutes 9.09, 9.12, that's 3 minutes, you can see the pattern here 9.12 to 9.16, that's 4, that'll be 5 and that'll be 6. You see there's a big blowout there in terms of um, waiting time. Server idle time is how long the server waits between finishing serving someone and starting the next one. So look at the first one, they finish at 9.04 then they start at 904 so there's no waiting time there 908 to 908 there's no waiting time there if we go all the way down the server never stops okay and that's probably pretty you'd probably be able to pick that up anyway because of the fact that people are arriving every three minutes and it's taking four minutes to serve now the queue length is the one that people tend to get a bit confused with so let's have a look at that works your arrival time is nine let's look at person number one their arrival time at one nine they get served at 9, so there's no one there. Okay, This person gets here at 9.03, so you look at the time there, the 9.03 there, let's just change our pen so, you can, so I can highlight it a bit. Okay, They get there at 9.03, and at 9.04 they get served. So see 9.04 is greater than 9.03? So that means there is one person in the queue. If we go back, the next time there is 9. So it's 9.03, that's greater than 9.03, that's less than 903, so it's got to be only one person in the queue. Okay, so one person in the queue. Let's go to this one here, 906. That one's greater than 906, correct? So that means there's one person in the queue. That's less than 906, so there's only one person waiting. Let's go to 909. 909, that's bigger than 909, so that's one person. That's less than 909, so that person's being served. So there's one person in the queue. Let's go to 912. 912, that's greater than 912, so there's one person in the queue. This is equal to 912, which means they're being served, so there's still only one person in the queue. We'll go to 915. 915 is when this person rocks up. 920, that's bigger than 915. 916 is bigger than 915. And then that's less than 915. So that means there's two people. I'll do that again. 915 is when they rock up. That's greater than 915. This is greater than 915. So therefore there are two people, because this one's less than that. Let's go to 918. 918, one person, two people. This one here is being served, so therefore there are two people there. And you can see that this will keep on following a pattern down here. The queue is going to get bigger as time goes on because of that difference between the server time and the arrival time. Let's have a look at the uh, average waiting time per customer. So if we add up our customer waiting time, three, 6, 10, 15, 21 minutes. So we go 21 divided by 7 gives us 3 minutes. 
So that's our average customer waiting time. So it's customer waiting time equals that as our average. The next one is, let's have a look at the server idle time or the percentage idle time for the server. Now I'll show you how it works even though we know it's going to be zero. Our total server idle time is zero and then we divide it by the number of minutes we're looking at. So you come down here to the last lot of minutes which is 28 times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage so this gives us 0%. This is server idle time. SIT, server idle time. Okay, so you add up the server idle time, divide it by the total number of minutes, times it by 100 to get it to a percentage. Now for us, this means that we've got our servers not idle at all, and they're always going flat out, um, and they're never going to stop. So that's how you do a queuing question. Now you may need to watch this a few times and you will have to practice it um, and you will make mistakes but it's one of these things that uh, you need to do. Probably the hardest thing is the queue length. Okay, um, But once you get the hang of it, it'll all be good. In the next video we'll look at how to do multi-server queues because that gets more interesting and can get more confusing.